So my name is Andrew and I am basically a Norwegian who has for the past 15 or so years lived abroad, meaning mm -hmm. outside Norway. I had I started my 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 adventure, if I can call it that, <laughs> uh, going to Dubai as a very young boy. And um, yeah, gained a lot of experience um, feeling that this is the only way that I could live. I would not be very happy uh, living like the nine to five yeah. hamster wheel lifestyle as many other people do. And many people find security and comfort in that. But for me, that will be the a horrible scenario. Mm. So that's what I've been doing. You know, I had multiple businesses. I had multiple ups, multiple downs. And I also lived in several countries, which all makes now into good stories, funny stories, funny situations. And uh, maybe I can, I don't know, share my experiences and knowledge and inspire other people to, to do the same. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so growing up in Norway, did you, how, how early on did you know the nine to five wasn't for you? Yeah, so I grew up uh, just outside Oslo, the capital, mm -hmm. and um, my mom, she's from the capital, and my father is from the countryside. Right. So I grew up on the countryside. Uh, while my my classmates were kind of more into the whole farmer lifestyle, if I can say so, mm -hmm. um, I was already seeing that I would I would want to leave. The village boundaries right. yeah and it was just too small for you it was yeah i think that i had this curiosity of what is beyond and as soon as i had my driver's license uh, i would be you know out i would be like going somewhere mm -hmm. so i think that the the idea of freedom the idea of you can sit in your car and you can drive to absolutely wherever you want <laughs> That is the freedom we all crave, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And I think it can, you know, it's the same feeling as when I'm uh, close to the to the to the sea, to the ocean. I'm thinking, if you have a boat, and you can have it here in front of you, you can basically sail wherever you want in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's that feeling of freedom that makes you want to see what is behind that next mountain. What is you know what is going on there? You know. Yeah. So at the time when I was um, summer, I turned 20, I actually moved to Dubai. I mean, that is a long story. I don't know if you want to take that now, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it in chronological order. Jump right in. Okay. Yeah. So I did all the, the high school and everything in Norway. And um, so after high school, uh, you're kind of like, you should go to university. That's the general recipe you should follow. Mm hmm um, so I did qualify for university. It's just that I didn't. I instead I went to. Uh, I did a one year travel and tourism um, course. Right. So, this kind of education would prepare me for a job in the travel industry, which is a very wide field. You know, you can do everything from being a travel agent. You can do like guided tours. You can work as a marketing person in you know travel retail mm -hmm. whatever or in the hotel industry, airline, whatever. So part of my education was to write uh, an assignment, like a, a thesis, if you want, but right. yeah, about, about uh, a destination. Mm -hmm. And I chose Dubai. So my teacher, um, for some reason, she submitted my, my, my finished project to the Dubai tourism authorities because they have representation offices around the world. Right. So whatever is something related to Dubai, if it's like a offshore powerboat race, if it's a travel fair, if it's something in the media about Dubai, that local office would be the one for journalists right, to okay. contact to get information. Uh -huh. So she submitted it and they liked it. And they said, hey, we really want you to, to work with us. So during that time when I was also studying and, and the year after, I was kind of working for them, doing like travel fairs, 
Uh, I went to some VIP events like the offshore powerboat race and stuff like that. And I started networking. So I discovered for the first time that what I'm good at is networking and to talk to people. Mm -hmm. um, I listen, I learn, and then I do. Mm. So at some point I decided I think my future is in Dubai. I like the, the whole feeling of Dubai. It sounds like Disneyland for adults, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and obviously watching a lot of the projects that were going on in Dubai, like building this seven star hotel yeah. and all of these amazing things that were now, when at that time was just in the beginning. It was just breaking ground, you know? And you realize that, hey, this might be something that I want to be a part of, mm. you know? So I got a job offer from Dubai. Um, wasn't, you know, well paid, wasn't anything. It was like a, a entry for mm. me into Dubai. I could live there, I can work there, get some experience. And obviously when I came there, the job wasn't as good as I thought. The working hours were not good, mm. long hours. The salary was lower than I expected and stuff like that, which were fine because I was there more for the experience. Mm -hmm. I had my savings. My, my parents were supporting me. So it wasn't about that. It was just to get a foot in the door. And then it was up to me to do the next step, mm -hmm. which I did. Um, obviously here, there's also a lot of um, issues I had. People who cheated me. Uh, I made great success, I made good deals, I made bad deals. You could talk for hours yeah. about that. But basically, I just found my my way in life, Yeah. right? And I also discovered that you can work on a project, whatever that project is, if it's real estate, if it's commodity trading, and you can basically make in a few months what I made in my, my part-time supermarket job in Norway in one right. year. Yeah. And I would make that money just based on my skills, mm -hmm. not because I showed up to work every day mm. at 8 a.m., you yeah. know? Right, okay. So when you realize that you can utilize your skills to get ahead in life, it kind of gives you a boost of confidence. And I think that's helped me in a way to know that whatever happens, in the future, I'll always be able to land on my feet, get up and, and, and you know, adapt to whatever society is changing or my career is changing or my business is changing. I'm always available to adapt. And I think that for for young people like, like yourself who are just now waking up and, and mm -hmm. wanting to find their way in life, mm -hmm. I think adaptability is super important now our parents generation they would do they would have an education they would be a carpenter or a nurse and that would be their job yeah, the rest of the life that was that right mm -hmm. but in these days we are changing jobs so fast mm -hmm. we are changing partners so fast we can live in different countries mm -hmm. like i don't think that my parents would even think about living abroad mm -hmm for for a period of time maybe you'd find someone and get married and live in america the rest of your life right but to take like oh let's take one year living in spain mm. that would just be not possible so i think that the the things that has changed is that we are now more and more able to work online we are more and more getting out of the normal jobs which are still super important that people are carpenters uh, nurses you know firemen you know it's mm -hmm. it's super important jobs but i think also more and more people are looking for that pot of gold in the end of the rainbow and wanting to have an easy life and i think that it's more important for people now the freedom than to actually see a future save money to buy a house and all of these things mm -hmm. and then you can say is that a good thing or bad thing we don't know yet but i think it's very important that 
people do like me follow your dreams okay you need a reality check you need to have some money to coming in you mm. know you should have some kind of plan the plan doesn't have to be very specific it can just be like i want to be independent i want to to, to learn a new language yeah. you know so small goals and then at some point you reach um another level and then you say okay now i can you know even further goals mm -hmm. so yeah that's i think what what i learned about dubai whatever you want it is actually possible you know and people believing in you giving you chances in the same way it has changed my personality to do to me being more open to other people mm -hmm. and giving other people chances um, let's say that maybe the Norwegian mentality is a bit cold uh, standoffish uh, you know but I think it has changed me into being more like if you today would pitch me an idea that you have, I would be super happy to support you to so you can reach your goals. Mm. I wouldn't just turn around, take your ID and do it myself. Mm. Because so many people supported me and I think that I kind of got inspired by that whole let's support each other. Mm. So I think that's a big part of who I am today and who I want to be. Yeah. Right. Um, between moving to Dubai and now, where have you lived and how did you end up there? Yeah. So I was in Dubai a few years. Um, then in 2007, seven, eight, the financial crisis hit. Mm -hmm. So basically overnight, a lot of the companies went bankrupt in Dubai. A lot of people lost their jobs. People just fled the country. A lot of the people that I used to do business with or, or investors, gone. Right. So I had to do something else. I went back to Norway and I started some companies with uh, a friend of mine that I had from a long time ago. And we, we've been in several businesses together. And uh, I think that that's when I learned how to actually do multiple businesses and how to not only okay i know about this business i'll do that the rest of my life no i knew okay how can we set up a business hire people pay taxes you know all of these things mm. um so then back in norway a while at some point we decided no let's um let's go somewhere warm because we work online mm -hmm. we don't physically have to be in norway this was uh, December that year, I think. So we were reading the, the newspapers, the uh, Financial Times of Norway, and there was a double page of uh, um, saying that Norwegian people living the high life in Malta. Mm. We had no idea where Malta was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I'm sure many people say Malta, is, isn't that like a uh, part of Italy or something? Mm. But it's actually its own country. Mm. So we would say, okay, wow, interesting. We started doing some research, found out that Malta is very good for doing business, low company tax, you mm -hmm. know, the expenses of living there. So we decided, okay, let's move to Malta. So we moved to Malta. Uh, we were there for many years. Then um, I moved away. So I moved to Barcelona, Spain, continued to work there. I uh, was there for like almost a year, then I wanted a change, so I moved to Thailand. So my idea was to just travel Asia, see all, you know, the Asian countries, you know. So my first start was Thailand, Bangkok. So I arrived there and, you know, I liked it so much, um, but I ended up staying because I arrived in October that year and I decided, okay, let me just stay mm -hmm. here. <clears throat> few months until Christmas I go to Norway for Christmas and then when I come back I can travel again right so I lived three months in, in Thailand then I went back to Norway then I went back to living in Malta again started a new business and um, at some point I decided no I want to go back to Barcelona again so I moved back to Barcelona and I lived there for then five years 
Then I got a partner and we decided to move somewhere else in Europe, in Spain. So we, well, I had been to Valencia before, mm -hmm. but this was kind of like the perfect, it was next to the sea, we had a beach, um, there's train, you can go easily to Madrid, Barcelona, and it's, you know, cheaper than Barcelona. The, and, and also the, the standard of living, like the, and also the crime is very low here. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's perfect for mm -hmm. many things. So we decided to move to Valencia and we've been here now almost like two and a half years. Right. Something and we're super, super happy here. Um, in terms of, of business, what is it that, you, like, how did you get into that in a more specific way? Like you, you said you moved to Dubai and then you got involved and you just started to get, find your footing in, in business. But in a less vague way, what do you mean by that? Like yeah. How do you... Uh, how did you master that sort of uh, skill? Yeah. So, yes, yeah, like you said, um, the term business, it's, being a businessman yeah. is very vague. Yeah, what is that? What is it? Business, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and sometimes that is, I wish I could just say I'm a nurse, I'm a policeman. Mm. Because then it would be like, okay, fine. So, I've been in so many different businesses. Everything from commodity trading, which is basically you're selling uh, concrete, oil, sugar. Right. Mm -hmm. Physical in, goods. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I've been in diamonds. I've been in real estate. So I've been in so many different types of industries. So it, then in that case, businessman is, is a good term. Mm -hmm. It covers everything. Yeah. And it also doesn't give me any restrictions for the future. Yeah. But always, you know, when there's like, so what is business, you know? Um, so obviously I have no education related to business. I have nothing about accounting. I have nothing about anything really. So all the skills I acquired, or I think that I have, comes from, you know, doing, failing, you know, mm -hmm. and trying and learning. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's interesting to see that um, I see business in everything. I, I always see an opportunity. Right. And I think that we talked about this the yeah. other day. If you would give me a thousand euros, my first thought would be, how can I make 1000 euros into 2000 euros? Mm -hmm. And I think that that is a good way of, of thinking because if you give me a thousand euros, obviously, I will want to go and do shopping or yeah. want to buy a new drone, whatever. Mm. But if I make the thousand euros into 2000 euros, I can still take the thousand euros and buy something then. And I have thousand euros extra. Yeah. Right. So I think that has always been something in the back of my mind. I remember one, one situation when I was very young, I was probably 13, 14 ish back in Norway. So we had, a uh, family who rented a, a cabin from us basically right. like a wooden cabin in the forest mm -hmm. so they at some point they they didn't want to rent it anymore so they just you know left it and they said well whatever is is there that is you know you can take it you know we we don't have anything of value there that we want so mm. whatever we put in the cabin you can just take it and there wasn't really anything good there it was but i needed a bike at the time and they had left a bike there and this bike first when i saw it i was like oh my god that's a, that's a very bad bike because mm. it it's the the wheels were very thin but then i was like what kind of bike is this and i googled it and i discovered this is a bike that you use in tour de france and you right, know, these yeah. things and i was googling the brand of the bike and everything I'm like oh my god almost three thousand euros what? for a new one yeah so and they just left that yeah they just left it there so i was like okay so this is how can I, how much can i sell this for mm -hmm. was my first yeah you know idea. how do i make money off this yeah my mom said no you can just have that bike and i didn't tell her how much it was worth mm. she said yeah you can just take that bike so i immediately went on um uh, uh kind of the same as craigslist i don't know what you call it in the uk like um yeah we, yeah 
yeah. Craigslist, yeah. yeah. Or like eBay, something similar. Yeah, similar like eBay. Right. And I just posted it. And I used, I think I posted it for like 500 euros, mm -hmm. equivalent in Norway. Um, which is super cheap for a bike. Yeah. It's not even that much used. So my parents live like one hour outside Oslo. You have to drive one hour. Right. So immediately I got people like calling to mm -hmm. the house phone because I, you know, I got yeah, my yeah. house phone. <laughs> and they were like, how oh, can I speak to Andre, please? Yeah. <laughs> my mom was like, nobody has ever called <laughs> and asked for my son. Yeah. You know, <laughs> unless they know him. So, and then like, Obviously, I just sold it to the first person who were willing to drive from Oslo one hour yeah. to, to pick it up. <laughs> so I, so I, I, my mother realized what I was doing and she's like, oh my God, I didn't know this was so expensive, this mm. bike. So someone drove all the way out to my farm. They gave me cash money for the bike. <laughs> they took the bike. I was happy. My mother was very, very surprised, but yeah. also happy. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that was kind of the first deal I ever did. <laughs> that was the moment that the uh, the penny dropped, you realize? Yeah, I got like dollar signs in my, <laughs> in my eyes, you know? Yeah, wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. So do you think that actually did maybe have some sort of a rippling effect throughout your life? You realized I, you can make money, you can make money and you don't need to go to a job to make money, you could do it different ways. There's so many different bespoke ways to make money. I think for sure, because the, the general idea people have is that you do your education, you get a job, that's mm -hmm. how you get money to yeah. live. And then you do that, you get your, do your family, you know, your picket fence, your station <laughs> wagon and your two and a half kids, <laughs> you know? Yep. But also when you discover, and, and I think everyone is dreaming about having like a, a second income or even mm. like a a passive income yeah but i saw this as like i mean this is what i want to do and mm. and obviously like you need to have a plan i mean most people need to have a plan they they want to know that they are okay in the future that's why people do education because yeah. they are like it's basically a promise if you do education it's kind of like a promise of you will be okay in the future mm. because if you play by the rules, you do your education, we will provide you with a job, Yeah, you know? But I was like, hmm, maybe I can do this. I had no idea what I would do. Mm -hmm. I just knew that I liked the feeling of generating money mm -hmm. on a deal that I made, basically. Mm -hmm. Taking, seeing an opportunity and then playing the opportunity correct and then cashing in on yeah. that. I don't think so much the, the money was was the motivation. It's like the thrill of the game. The almost. thrill of the game, yeah. Yeah. Or that I I saw a value in something that nobody else mm, did. Yeah. And I took the opportunity. I I, I posted it and I succeeded. Mm -hmm. So it was more the success of doing it, the success of the of the deal more than the actual money money value yeah it's an interesting way of looking at it how how would you um how would you uh, inspire people to do that how do you how what are some like uh, words of wisdom for the youth that want to try these uh, non-mainstream ways of making money yeah so first of all um i think that there's a lot of things out there now that wasn't out there when I was young. Mm. But I think that what is sad is to see that most of these get rich quick schemes is basically scams. Yeah, yeah. And in, in a way, I would like to say to people that if something sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Mm -hmm. And also, <clears throat> I sometimes hear people say, maybe you said it also, I want to create my own business so I don't have to work so much. Mm. But that is completely wrong. Yeah. Because when you have your own business, it's all on you. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, when you're in the, you know, the point I am now, I have my business running, you know, it's, it's not like new. So it is there because, you know, you have to manage it. But the beginning to, to, to start it, I would say that 
people have to uh, identify what are you good at? Mm -hmm. What are your skills? Because, for example, there's no point in doing something that you're not passionate about. Um, unless you are a person that can dedicate to something purely for the sake of the money. For example, if you're a, a stockbroker, mm -hmm. maybe your passion when you were a kid was not to be a stockbroker or a hedge fund manager, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you like the thrill of the business of the money yeah so you're investing your time in it right yeah um but sitting at home and watching the money tick into your account it's it's almost impossible mm -hmm. you know so i think if young people today can you know get um if, if they're good at something develop that skill even yeah. more think how can i monetize it or even if you love something, uh, it's also important to realize that you can never live off that. You know, it will always be a hobby. Right. So don't try too hard. Um, you know, struggling and and doing something that probably will never work. Right. So you'd recommend having passion projects and and then monetizable projects. Yes, exactly. If you want to do it. Like yes. Yeah. If them, if they can be the same, that's perfect. Yeah. But usually they are not. Yeah. So, so I don't try and force them to be the same. Exactly. Yeah. So I showed you some of my passion projects mm -hmm. where I did everything, set up the company, the web page, and everything. Mm -hmm. It could be a full time job for someone. Yeah. But I was less. It's like painting a painting. You paint the painting, and then the painting is done. Yeah. Next. Yeah. So I always had my. My, my monetized project where I do make money. Mm -hmm. Those are probably the things that I don't tell people so much about. Yeah. And because then, presumably they're not actually as interesting to talk about. Exactly. And that's why they're not your passion projects. Your yeah. passion projects you're clearly passionate about and that's why you do want to talk about them. Yeah, yeah? that's great. So I think many people still think that I do real estate, for example, mm -hmm. because at some point I was very... Um, I was, you know, posting about that on my Facebook, my mm -hmm. Instagram, right. you know, everything like that. So people remember that, ah, oh, mm. he used to do real estate, mm -hmm. you know, abroad. I'm not doing, I haven't done anything in real estate in five years. Right. So I think it's important to have the project you are passionate about and you realize it will never be your main income, mm -hmm. but it will be a creative outlet. And then it will be your bread and butter, the, the, the job, the project that actually pays your rent and where you can build on. Right. So I think young people today, if you can, um, you know, acknowledge, I mean, if you can uh, acquire new skills, learn a new language, I mean, young people they might watch all the seasons of games of thrones <laughs> you know mm -hmm. if you spend the same time on on you know improving your knowledge of something mm -hmm. or learning a new language you would be way better off than when than what you are in the last episodes of yeah. your netflix series right yeah yeah we need but, to start investing our time more wisely yeah mm. and just maybe just one hour a day you know do Learn a new language, um, learn a new skill, learn about cryptocurrency, you mm -hmm. know, trading or photography. Mm. Even if it's just one hour, just just do it, you know. Yeah, I suppose that's one hour more than you would have had if you didn't. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so let me kind of group all these together. So you've got invest your time wisely, invest more into uh, learning and, and gaining and acquiring all these new sort of abilities and skills. And then an important one there would be don't mix your hobbies with, with something you actually can gain an income from. Make sure that they're not necessarily separate, but don't force them to be something they're not. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be realistic. Right. Uh -huh. Because even though you, so, so this is something I also see a lot of times when people want to do their business is that they have something they are passionate about. Let's say that you are passionate about, you want to design motorcycle helmets with uh, mm. cool cartoons on or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe the cartoon types you like or the type of helmet you like or or it's very specific you like it. Right, yeah. But it will never be a good business idea. Mm. And it's the same as if you're, for example, if you're building houses. Even if you like the color pink, mm. maybe you shouldn't paint all the houses you're building pink <laughs> because you're going to sell them, right? Yeah, yeah. So you have to make sure that whatever you do in your business, it's not really so much reflecting your specific mm. type of, I don't know, design or, or color or hobby, whatever. If you want to succeed, it should be very broad, very mm. general. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, if you make a lot of money, you can build your pink house, you yeah. know, obviously. And then you can do whatever you want. Then you can do whatever <laughs> you want. But I think that it's important to... And that's also we talked about uh, social media. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes I see people have like a, a page on their Instagram, like a real estate business page on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And once, and there might be pictures of their cat uh, or their new baby right. on the business account. Yeah. And I don't know if other people react on that, but I'm, if I'm seeing that baby pictures on on a real estate agent's Instagram, mm-hmm. like the business profile, I'm like, no, this is not professional. Mm. So I'm maybe I'm the one being old or picky or whatever, but I think it's important to just you know keep business and and hobbies. Right, private life separate. Mm-hmm. Right, um, where uh, where do you see your business going? Where do you see you going right now? Like, wh- where do you see yourself going in the future? Do you can plan on continuing living abroad, um, or somewhere else abroad? Yeah, so that's a very interesting um, question. So the last, all of last year, we had this uh, COVID uh, coronavirus. Mm-hmm. So I think that has been. I haven't been so affected in in a bad way, mm-hmm. um, but I also see a lot of small and medium business owners. They have lost everything they worked for. You mm-hmm. know, they lost. I mean, the the restaurant they had is now closed down. Yeah. Everyone yeah. is fired. So I think that the only thing I know about the future is that we don't know. So again, I think what is important is to be have adapt ability you you can change your business and i've done that so many times let's say that you have a telecom company and you can adapt that to whatever happening in the market and you should also be very fast to adapt to new technologies or or new ways of uh, doing business in that industry Mm -hmm. because the moment you lag behind the moment other will surpass you and you will just be out of business. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to continue um, living abroad. I do have some real estate projects in, in Norway right. that I might be having to be more uh, on top of. Mm-hmm. But I think that in general, I like the feeling of living abroad, not really have any plans. Mm. I mean, I'm always curious. I always wanted to live in Asia more, for example. Right. I think that for a, a business entrepreneur like myself, there's very interesting places like in Singapore, um, Hong Kong, kind of, um, and these places that are now wanting to attract young entrepreneurs. And I think that will be interesting, but... I don't think that will happen. I think I'm too getting too old now for <laughs> for living so far away. Mm. Um, but maybe somewhere else in Europe before I eventually go back to Norway, that will be good. Before you eventually go back to Norway, I think that you know I, I'm I'm coming from a I'm from a farm, you know, and mm. I think that at some point I do want to take over the whole farm right. responsibility for that. Right. And. Uh, and you know my, my my parents are getting older and stuff like that so i i think that if you had asked me 10 years ago i would probably be no i'd never want to live on a farm in the middle of the forest mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. now having seen the world having seen people that come from different cultures than me that would be super happy if they could get like a plot of land in norway you know so i think it would be 
stupid of me to just let that yeah. go in these crazy times where people are not even owning the apartments they live in yeah yeah exactly yeah to live there i have my own forest uh you know uh, lots of lands mm-hmm. there's a farm i can do i can have animals you know there's there, that's the freedom i think that most people do want to live so you know in contact with nature and mm. and, and and these things i can have my own vegetable garden yeah and still it's only 45 minutes to oslo yeah if you wanted to go in yeah 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 that's the, the perfect situation in my mind yeah, yeah. you've got your own little slice of heaven yeah you can do whatever so you want with. um do you have any closing words any any uh tips and tricks anything you want to say um um, I would say that, you know, like whatever you uh, hear. So obviously now there's a lot of like scams going on yeah. with bitcoins. There's a lot of fake news also. Mm-hmm. And you have deep fakes, you know, all of these things. So I think that our the generation that is young now and, and growing up now should be very aware of what is real, what is not real. And also, don't get scared by the future because the future has always been um, something that, I mean, if you told my my parents when they were young that, hey, in the future, we will do like, we can see each other on on small (laughs) phones, you know, we can, you know, stuff like that. Even sending things wirelessly would be, my God. Mm -hmm. So I think that in the future... Uh, the generation growing up now, the more knowledge you can, you know, acquire, the more aware you can be of your surroundings, the more critical you can be of the news, yeah. the facts, always double check all the facts you're, you're getting. The more tools you have in your backpack, mm. the better off you will be in, in the future. I think that is a good... Uh, um, kind of mindset to, right. uh, to constantly have. evolving yeah. constantly gaining yeah yeah absolutely well thank you very much for doing this with me yeah. I really enjoyed it thank you for having me